name is Neville Turner. I farm in the Corrigan district, which is about two hours east southeast of uh, of Perth. This year we're cropping 5,500 hectares, um, predominantly grains. We we run a few sheep over summer, buy and sell. The boom spray is the most used piece of machinery on the farm, and it always needs to be going. And yeah, look, you just spraying is one of those things that's got to be done on time. had a few not so good years in terms of, of rainfall and there was nobody contracting in town and we bought a machine so people sort of wanted us to do a bit of work and it just sort of grew from there. I've been contracting now for I reckon this will be our tenth year. Now is our busy time of the year when we come into in-crop spraying with canola and lupins and desiccating is probably, probably the time where, where most of our work is done now. We've come a long way in, in the way we manage spray drift. 20 years ago, most boom sprays had what they call an XR flat fan nozzle. So the faster you go, the more pressure it pushes, so the finer the droplet becomes, we, it, make, it mists it up a lot. Where nowadays, with the air inductor nozzle, that takes air with the droplets and they're bigger, also coarser droplets, so they're heading towards the ground, so they sort of explode when they hit the target. At the moment, we're applying insecticide to canola to control the budworm. So up here, we have our target litres a hectare, which is 60. Our application rate, which is going out at the moment, which is 60, so they have to both match up. If, if they don't, there's a problem. Our speed, which is 22 kilometres an hour, Our boom spray predominantly runs at between 22 and 25 kilometres an hour. Um, a lot of people travel up to 30. Um, I don't think you get as good a job at 30 kilometres an hour. And look, even if you come down to 15 kilometres an hour, you'll actually get a better job. But you've got to weigh up how much you've got to do and how much time you've got to do it in. Boom heights, um, we are 50 centimetre nozzle spacing, so generally you're 50, you work on an average of 50 centimetres above your target. But we're using a lot higher water rates now in the last five years than we have been probably in the previous 20 and water rate is definitely doing a better job especially on the hard to kill weeds as you know, most weeds become resistant over time with more applications so water rate is definitely making a difference. Insect spraying we used to do a lot at 30 but even now we're spraying insects at 60. It just seems to get a bit better coverage and a better job. But with that, you've gone to bigger droplets, so you've got less drift as well. In regards to minimising spray drift, it's always better to have some wind than no wind. The wind forces the um, particles down into the crop more rather than them that um, drifts up into, upwards into the atmosphere. But every day we're conscious of wind speed, direction, humidity, and like what's downwind. Buffer zones, they're constantly in your mind. The location of the house, creeks, dams, waterways, bush, the whole lot, you're, it's just constantly in your mind. Some days we won't even start if if it's they saying like there's there's going to be rain around, or it might be six hours before the rain, but you've got to weigh up the rain fastness of the chemical you're using. So if it's got four hours rain fastness and there's rain in six, you can't risk it. The the most expensive spray job is the one that doesn't work. I've never had an issue with an inversion doing damage, but we constantly monitor it. More, more towards the end of the day, where we sort of worry about our, our inversion layers, you pick it up more with the dust than the drift nowadays. With the new 24D regulations, we're checking the label every time, because you have to have it right. So, and our, our, your speed, 
water rate, your droplet size, which is ultra coarse, it's, it's got to be there because that will, otherwise if we don't adhere to it and we have a problem, we'll lose 2,4-D. In the last 20 years, we've come a long way in, in the way we manage spray drift um, with, the, with the introduction of air inducted nozzles. Now I think the next step, there is quite a few boom sprays out there now, what they call um, PWM, which is pulse width, width modulation. So the nozzle pulses, and irrespective of speed and water rate, you can, you can adjust your droplet size. And I think that's the next step in spraying, and that's, that's what I would like to try next, is the is pulse width modulation. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.